South Carolina for some more United States Disc Golf Championships. We've got some round three lead card action. I am Ian Anderson. That's Philo Brathwaite. Oh, yeah. And that guy and Chris Dickerson coming off some heaters from yesterday, Philo. Big time. 15 down, 14 down. Some numbers you don't see very often out here at Winter Gold Course, but those guys put a hurting on this track, and now they're in prime time position to have top finishes at this event. Yeah. The thing about here is trying to stay consistent, and that's hard to repeat, isn't it? Uh, big low numbers like that, yeah, it's hard to repeat 14, 13, you know, 15 under, but, you know, if they shoot anywhere between 8 and 9, 10, they're still right in the hunt, right in the mix. I don't really see too many guys getting super low and catching them at this point. Yeah, that was a look at hole one, great forehand hole if you got it. Um, I mean, how, how do you force it back in on this one, a little skip shot low on the outside something? I was talking to Felberg last night, and he said, I've missed the sidearm all three rounds, so I'm going to just poke and hope down the middle and just try to get a look, because really? I've had nothing yet, you know, and <laughs> there's not much there. There, he really isn't. Chris Dickerson on the box, he's throwing an A3. It's not the worst place in the world to be. Yeah. He's on the front side of the bush, so you won't have to straddle out too bad. And, and no death putt, too. No, very safe putt. FD3 out of our friend Eagle, Mr. McMahon. Push that one a little bit long. He's going to have an odd stance and probably not much but a chip out from there. Yeah, that one got pretty deep there. Alex Russell out of Vancouver, Washington. One of the Northwest finest. Up there with Nate Sexton. And I'm sure Nate inspired him. Yeah. This will be a Gator 3 out of Alex. Shout out to Scott Weathers, too. Also holding it down for the Northwest. Big time. He's not here this year, but... I know. We miss him out here. That guy can throw down some lower numbers. Gary Gerthy mm -hmm. up next. You know, Scott helped me get my albatross disc back. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, it was crazy, man. I lost it. What's the it. story? <laughs> we'll get into that. All right, all right. Uh, this is a Color Glow Firebird from Double G, Gary Gerthy. That's a little high out the gate. That's got to be much lower, maybe two or three feet above that rock. Yeah, he kind of got punished for that mistake. And yeah. He'll just be chipping up, trying to save his three. Here that is right now. And if you guys haven't watched Garrett play before, you're in for something special. Big time. That'll work for a par, which is not a bad score on hole one. There's Eagle trying to figure out what to do here. Yeah, he's got to manufacture some kind of looking for an upside down toss, looking for anything he can do just to sneak up on that stump and walk out of here with a stress-free par. Smart play. Yeah, really not much of an option from there. But here is Chris Dickerson. Look at his stretch that lead to the three right off the bat here. Yeah, you know, that's a great way for him to start this round when everybody else within striking, striking distance, Alex, you know, is a few off, but right now it's just a two-man race, and any time you can pull away, gain another stroke. Well done, Chris. Making it happen. Alex also looking for a birdie. Should be just four back at Eagle if he makes this one. There we go. Good clean start there for Mr. Alex Russell. Piping the drive, giving himself a very makeable putt. Low stress. And Good way to start. Garrett Gerthy cleaning up his part. All right, Albatross story hit me. We got time. Yeah, so what happened was is uh, I used that disc the very next year after the Albatross uh -huh. on the same hole. Why not? I, I threw my shot. It didn't go nearly as well. <laughs> <laughs> so the trees on the left side that I was hugging the tree line, uh -huh. it ended up in there. I walk over, I make my play to get out, trying to scramble for my five at that point. I leave the disc. Oh no! I make my play, totally just walk away from the disc, left it there at the tree line. 
two days later, I get a message. Hey, man, did you leave your Albatross disc? Oh, my gosh. And I was like, no, it's right here in my bag. I go look at my disc golf bag, no Albatross disc. And I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the story has it. Some pretty newbie guy found it, and he was playing with somebody who's been around for a while, and he was like, is that Philo's disc? And the guy was like, I don't know, and he just kind of walked off with it. And he knew that the guy's name was George, that's all he knew. Uh huh. It's it wasn't Scott, but the guy reached out to Scott, who was playing with this random guy, and uh -huh. that's kind of how this whole thing happened. Wow. So. Anyway, it took about two years, but they tracked it down. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, man. Uh, on to hole two, Chris Dickerson on the box, throwing an FX2, a little fairway driver action. It's a pretty flight. That's beautiful. I mean, he's in prime position right there, middle of the fairway. He's got the option to go over safe land or test the parking lot. Dickerson with a 71 mile an hour rip right there. Didn't look that fast. Sneaky he, speed. He smashes. Yeah, I was, I was a little surprised by his speeds today. They are high. Alex Russell going boss up the middle. I like how that stood up about halfway in flight. That's what he needed to kind of carry that gap, push out into the open. He's so good at like, managing the turn those bosses have. It's amazing. Alex, oh, sorry, Eagle McMahon with a C-line PD. Playing for that left cubby over there by the brick building. That's extremely straight, so he's going to have a nice look over the parking lot. And Gary Gerthy. I believe this is his wraith. Playing the high pocket, just busting through. He's got plenty of speed to crash through just about any tree. Just still spinning. Unreal. Turns into a tree roller for a second. Looking at Alex Russell second here. A ways to the pin. Mm. I'm sure he would have liked to have not hit that. Just I think he would have been little. parked, right? Yeah. I think he would have been right there. Yeah. He's going to have a slightly obstructed putt there. Garrett, is that color glow firebird? Double G's been working his flick into his repertoire this year. Not the best effort, but he's safe. Mm -hmm. He'll have an outside look for the putt. Eagle, just under uh, 300 of the pin, 287, going with a P3X. That is a putter, if we're not familiar. It's incredible how a putter just skips, 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 skips like that. I you. know, right? <laughs> he put on a little bit of angle, I noticed that time. But yeah. He did. He put a lot of angle on it, mm -hmm. but I mean, still, like, maybe it's just a little moist out there. I mean, look how much less yeah. the has got. Also yeah. throwing a putter, yeah. Uh, Garrett trying to manage the sticks. Going to end up with a par, most likely. I Alex he Russell. Took one of his so Sonics out there for that putt. I think you're right, yeah. Garrett Gerthy Sonic, such a great disc. Pick one up if you can. Support our man. I hear he's got those jerseys for sale as well. That's right, yeah. Speaking of supporting Garrett, have you heard of the, the birdie thon folks down in Florida? Mm -mm. They, uh, they watch all his rounds for every birdie. They all chip in like a buck or something like that and hook up Garrett after the tournament. I need one of those. I know. <laughs> Shout out to Charlie Boris and all those guys. <laughs> There's Chris Dickerson making good for the birdie. I don't think anybody wants to take that with Chris Dickerson, man. You know? <laughs> broke, be broke in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great way to bankrupt your family. Family and friends. Here is Eagle for Birdie. Looking to keep pace with Chris here. There we go. Yep. Keeping that lead to just three. And Garrett's par. That'll work. That's a nice putt from Alex. So did you throw it after you got it back? Or did it go on the wall? I've thrown it maybe three times since. And now it's just in the van cruising around with me. So Good omen type of deal. Somebody might bring it up and talk about the albatross and I'll stick it in their hand and they won't even realize that's uh, the disc. <laughs> that's a fun one, man. Like, oh, you got any old destroyers? I'm like, sure. What about, what do you think about this one? They're like, oh, this feels nice. <laughs> I'm like, you don't even know what you're holding right now, do you? <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, it's a lot of fun doing that. Disc golf history. Absolutely. Hole three. A little downhill shot. Dickerson looking to start this round off with a hat trick and let everybody know I'm ready to play today. Reaching for a PA3. This looks so much shorter halfway down the, f the fairway than it ended up being. It was perfect. I, I don't know. 
That thing just carried. It did. I mean, putters glide. They, it they looked do. a little bit low out of his hand, but mm -hmm. I mean, he threw it so fast that it got there in a hurry. Gator three from Alex Russell. I like this play. That's that's really nice. I mean, if you've got the forehand speed to get there, I mean, it's the smarter play. Fading away from OB is a nice thing. Absolutely. There's some hazard over there on the right side, but is there? There is. P3X from Eagle looks a little high. A little bit shallow too. Like, oh, look at that. Ah, that one worked. Putters, man. I thought that was a little bit on the left side, but putters they dig in a little faster yeah. than the mid range, so. Hitting the brakes and staying on the green. Color Glow Rock 3 from Double G. That needs to flip. Yeah, he never got that over inbounds land long enough. Mm -hmm. He's going to have to pay the price with this putt right here. Hopefully save his par. Looks like 40 out right now. Well, he's looks about three or four paces off the line there. In front of him is the circle. So, yeah, I'd guess about 40. Oh, good bet. Yep. I'll be taking an unfortunate bogey though on a on a birdie hole for being honest out here. For sure. Eagle trying to shake off some early round jitters possibly, getting focused and makes a great putt. Absolutely. Glad to see him get going. He's only going to lose one stick to Dickerson in three holes, but he's going to want to turn that around and start taking strokes if he yeah. wants a chance at winning this title. We need somebody to keep up with Chris. Somebody's got to do it or he's going to walk away with this thing. He's definitely trying, starting his day with a turkey. He surely did. Very rare that you see the leader just come out cool and confident. No mistakes, perfect position, three holes in a row. He's, he's Usually you see a little bit of early jitters, takes a minute to calm down, to settle mm -hmm. in, and not Chris Dickerson. He is ready to rock. I think you feel like he's got enough been there, done that, that he's not feeling those nerves maybe got a b yesterday you know i hear you but i think you know also chris dickerson's won two you know disc golf pro tour championships yeah, exactly and, you know he's usually come from behind them <laughs> yeah you know it's not usually chris dickerson leading the way it's chris dickerson making a push towards the end so now he's in the driver's seat let's see how he handles it you yeah know, there's a lot that could still happen definitely a little more pressure when you're the one being chased rather than the, the chaser unless if you start pulling away you know, yeah, yeah. Then it gets when you start smooth. stretching your lead, then the pressure comes down, the stress comes down, and you just can throw your shots and not worry too much. Like you have a little bit of a cushion that you could make a mistake, but you're not obviously wanting to. <clears throat> Chris Dickerson on the box. He throwing an FX2 fairway driver. You think there it's planned for out there? Like, that's the smart play. That drop zone angle, you mm -hmm. know, on the line of that drop zone, going through the mandatory is ideal. You see so many guys getting a little greedy off the tee, you know, trying to get down in that little gully, and they'll kick one of these trees right Alex or left. Needed a bit more air under that disc, and yeah. he's going to be a bit short. It's going to be hard to attack for birdie from there. Yeah, it feels like a par drive to me. Eagle with an FD three. This looks great. Uh, One tree to miss. Slightly if he misses there. that, he has probably the most boring chip shot eagle ever he'll throw uh -huh. onto the surface, but now he's going to have to work for it a little bit more, and double G blows past the ideal landing zone, and he's going to have some work to do. That's that's jail for this hole over there, it feels it like. It is. There's really not much of progressing on, out of that lie. You can kind of work your way forward, but you, you know, opportunity for birdie is gone. Yeah. It looks like the A3 from Chris. That was a nice shot from Alex, though, not trying to do too much. No, he made the right play. Took what the course gave him. There you go. That's the way to play this hole. Wow. Not even in the trees. Nope. Haven't seen too many people pure it like that. Yeah. Have unobstructed putt, you know. Garrett's finding a window here for his forehand roller and going back into the trees. Well, he's on the tree line. That's where the basket is, so mm -hmm. that's not a bad thing. Should be able to find a way through. Here is Eagle after that fantastic drive, which honestly could have even been better if it hadn't hit that tree. And back into the bush he goes. 
Seems to be a common landing zone on this hole. That it does. Uh, looking at Alex Russell right now on his third. Over a little par save here. A little high one angle turn, knurled to the basket right inside the bullseye. Nicely done. No stress par. And that's Garrett in that tree cluster somewhere. Mm. There talking with his card mates, probably we're talking about footing. Mm -hmm. Making sure he's all good to throw from here. Nice out. Yeah. No stress par for him too. Eagle. Trying to manufacture a putt from under these trees. Looking for a birdie. Nicely done. So that's a putt you're probably not practicing all the time, you know? Yeah, I think most of us feel like if we have a swing, we got a chance, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? When we're inside the circle like that, didn't look like it was completely blocked up for him. Just, you know, a little bit of a knee, keep the swing the same. Mm -hmm. Chris, to match Eagle and go four for four to start, Philo. I believe he did something similar yesterday. I think you're right. I think he went five for five or six for six or something like that. So he was on a heater. Something silly. I think he's officially still on it right now. Yeah, a lot of birdies on his card the last two rounds. <laughs> Almost as much green as this guy. I think he's got like 75% birdies at this point or something. It's, it's ridiculous. Garrett and Alex, some par tappers in here. Eagle with that good spin. Buttery smooth and money. Oh, that's little old disc golf. Shout out to Johnny Disc Golf for that. Now we are on to hole five. Signature hole out here, one of many. Yeah, this is definitely an iconic hole here at the Winter Gold Course. I mean, hole five, measuring in just over a thousand feet. Not too many opportunities you won't be seeing for Eagle on this par five. You gotta throw two monster shots to get over there. So a lot of guys are just playing two position shots. Get across the water, have a look for their birdie four. Walk out of here happy. That is the plan. We'll see what ends up happening. You never know after your first shot out here. Chris Dickerson, that's an M3 in his hands. I guess absolutely a placement shot for him if he's throwing a mid-range, right? Like you mentioned. Yeah, I mean, those two bushes out there are like the line that you want to get the disc started on and then get that late slide to the right. That's ideal. Keep yourself down on the bottom side of the fairway. And he just never got the air under that, and that's going to cut roll a little bit, but he's got plenty of land to work with. And only 268 off a tee there, Philo. Not much doing there. I mean, he can still make birdie. He's got to push one up the fairway about 400, but mm -hmm. he can get there. Eagle McMahon going to rip on a cloud breaker. Throwing these smooth, buttery hyzers with that thing. Mm -hmm. First two times we've seen him throw it, it's been right on the spot. Yep. 67, that just looked like the most boring <laughs> half swing and 67 miles an hour, 395 feet. Shots to push now for that. Wow. Incredible. Alex Russell, he's reaching for a boss. A little more aggressive line, right? Yeah, and it looked like his swing was more aggressive and it was six miles, seven miles an hour slower. <laughs> Bounces right off Eagle's disc. Eagle 403 makes. feet. It's so weird how that can work sometimes. It, yeah. Alex did like do the flex flight, right? Put a little flex yeah. on it, so it wasn't one angle, but still. Yeah. It's, it's like 60 miles an hour for one guy gets 400 feet. 67 <laughs> gets 395. Is it, is it a spin different? Is it spin angle? I angles? think it's the finish. Yeah. You know what I mean, yeah. I saw the finish that Alex got a little bit more bump and run. And yeah. Oh, that's true, huh? Eagle just kind of dug. This is a Cheshire Cat Wraith from Garrett Gerthy. It's really He's really putting a move on this yeah. thing. What's he going for? Big, Big sky roller. Ooh, this needs to turn in a hurry. Get and over. It does just on time. It is got within about a meter of the water and knurls right into the prime position. Six hundred and eagle. He's like four hundred feet farther down the fairway than Chris right now. Unbelievable. So Chris is trying to get back on plan here with a big shot. Throwing a wide hyzer around the trees, crashing in here. Dig in. Ooh. Seen a bunch of those just power skip straight into the water, so that was a great finish. Yeah, you put that one up just high enough to make that happen, I feel like. Eagle with the Cloudbreaker second shot. 
He's been playing it up here to the right side. Not really challenging the water. Yeah, he Ooh. just doesn't mind that extra distance. Yeah, he's got enough speed to cross the water easily, so. Yeah, looking at Alex's second shot. Uh-oh. Yeah, uh. He's going to want that to be a little bit lower down the hill to make the play less stressful. But yeah. He's got the speed to make the crossing from there. And uh, this guy also has speed to make the crossing from here, Philo. Yeah, you know, it's very rare that we see anybody even in position to have to make this decision, and Double G has set himself up for a great look to get onto the green in two. Our Bushnell rangefinders put this at 425, I believe it was. And he's That's throwing... That's just a chip shot for, him, for Double G, man. He went up and over the big mature trees. Can you believe that, man? Like... Inside circle one, looking at his eagle three. That angle, I'm throwing like 200 feet. He threw 450. I don't get it, man. He's been doing it a long time, you know. <laughs> Double G's been playing disc golf practically his whole life. So, yeah. I mean, his body grew up around the disc golf swing. That's a great way to put it, Philo. Looking at Dickerson. Looking to get back on plan with a good third shot here. Going mid, it looks like. That thing's got to hook up. It does, but dragging back just to about circle's edge. That's a Chris Dickerson putt. Yeah. Wouldn't be surprised to see his step through. Alex looking at this water crossing, holding the boss. Looks like he's lining up a flick. He had a nice little wrist flip on that. He does it just as well as anybody. Sure does. Pushes it out just a little bit past circle one. He'll have about a 37, 38er. He's not minding that one. Eagle, 407 to the pin. That's a little too high. He never pressed the line of the basket with that shot. Yeah. You can just tell right out the gate. He's going to have a bit extra work than the rest of the fellows on the card. It did not lead the receiver, as it were. No. Here is his lengthy birdie bid. Not a bad effort. Just probably misread the wind a little bit. Thought he'd get a little bit more carry out of it. Alex, I'm just a little bit closer. Oh. He had the want on it, but he pushed the line just a hair. Yeah, that looked really good. And here is Dickerson to stretch that lead to four. Good stepper. Oh, not even stepping no that one. Step Interesting, man. No doubt. Like, usually as soon as he gets outside circle one, like, yeah. you expect to see that little awkward step through putt. Everybody's curious if that's a foot fault or not. And officially it's not, as long as his foot doesn't touch the ground before the back one comes off, like, he's fine. But mm -hmm. it just looks so weird, and the timing is hard to pick up on but that time he just goes straight standstill and buries it and here we go double g for eagle rarefied no air philo problem. we got people on the other side of the hole there's james conrad putting for his <laughs> finishing Hope, hopefully a birdie <laughs> <laughs> hopefully a birdie yeah First time in real you know you got some claps people around even though there's not many around there they paid attention they see what's going on Eric Gerthy is special, you guys. Alex cleaning up his par. No wonder now that a, a guy maybe like Simon, who's way back in the field, can catch wind of what Double G did today. Maybe he'll take a stab at it for his final round. Yep. Won't be on camera, though. <laughs> he won't be on camera, but he sure does like to push the envelope. Oh, yes, know? he He's, does. He likes chasing down cool shots. And Simon throws some great rollers, too. There's a bottom stamp destroyer he got from Corey Ellis. Wanted me to give him a shout out. There you go. Corey Ellis is a great guy. No doubt. Double G getting all of that booty into that shot. And <laughs> swinging that disc high and wide. And yeah. Like, you look at Eagle, he's like real tall. It makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Gary's like, he's like just like an average person sized dude. Centripetal force is my uh -huh. answer. He's got mass. 
you know? Kinetic linking, too. I, I like Inertia that one, man. mass, man, yep. you know? Like, it's the body weight that's helping them get that speed on it. Human trebuchet. Oh, Whole yeah. six. Go to the beach. You're talking about that cat who's got that 82-mile-an-hour sidearm. Yeah, yeah. Look how big he is. Yeah, he's a big dude. So you add that mass with speed, and boom, you got 82 miles an hour. Yep. Double G just toned it down about 15 miles an hour, gets it into that mid-60s range, and... Beautiful. Absolutely parks it. Someone's going three down over two holes. Wow. Chris Dickerson. Big shout out to the grounds crew and volunteers out here making the beach hole looking cool. That was really nice. I haven't seen that one before. Not me either. Chris Dickerson, an uncharacteristic brick. Just not a good shot all around. Just sawed that one right off. Never had a chance. Yeah. So this is an opportunity for Eagle here. He could potentially grab two sticks from him if he sticks this one close. Heiser flipping that MD3. He's done it twice in a row beautifully. Let's see what happens today. Oh, man. no. That thing got so greasy, man. Did not catch that US Open grass He'd out here. He'd been stopping right at Circle's Edge before, and mm -hmm. that one he just powered it through the zone. Just a bit too much speed, and he's going to be heading to the drop zone. See how long that thing was spitting on the ground? I did. That <laughs> thing had a bunch of speed on that thing. Alex Russell throwing a Thunderbird. Right shape, but comes up just a bit short on the speed. He'll be outside circle one, but he's got a very safe look at the basket from there. Yeah, super attackable. He doesn't have to put it soft. He can put his normal speed on it. Mm, well he surely did, and the disc didn't drop. Man, is that great bits? <clears throat> Always give it a chance to go in, like you talk about, you know. Absolutely. Uh, we're looking at Chris Dickerson from the drop zone, trying to save a par. This one, you do got to put a little slower. You can see he tries to put that early ante on it and take some of that speed off right out the gate, but keep it online. And he was online, but that water behind it—it's hard to put it up high in the chains. It's it's just filling your eyeballs with water, you know. When you're staring at that basket, there's not much else you're looking at. He took a safe bid. He didn't put himself at risk of picking up another one. Yeah. Was it like eight feet from the basket to the OB? Maybe. Actually, more because it's three paces. If you see the bullseye, uh -huh. it goes right up to the water. And oh, okay. About, look, you can see about eight really? inches from that back brick, so maybe ten. Wow. Maybe ten feet. Here is Garrett for strokes on folks for his card. Getting two on the top two guys and one on Alex with a putt right here. Well done, Garrett. And we'll have some bogey drop ins from uh, Chris and Eagle and a par vision one of those from Alex here. Look at Alex making sure he doesn't mess up the USDGC. What a nice guy. <laughs> he is an absolute gentleman. I'm sure you've seen a bunch of guys just trample right through it. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, whatever, I'd brick this hole. <laughs> Too cool. Man. Nice work by the grounds crew, our volunteers. We had a really awesome ceremony today. That's right. Golden, Golden Rake. Rake. Yeah. Willis family and Mr. Nichols. I always want to shout out the people who take care of us out here at the at the championship. We're missing a lot of staff, man. Yeah. All kinds of stuff. All kinds of people. Our hospitality, our cart drivers, our shuttle drivers, the water guys. I mean, just wow. all kinds of guys who would be moving and shaking all around this place, you know, serving us, us the players. You yeah. Know? Not this week with COVID going on and the 250 persons on property rule. Yep. Everything's broken down. A lot of holes changed because of that. They couldn't have as many spotters as they would have liked. Garrett Gerthy. Trying to pipe this triple Mando just a little bit wide. He'll be safe. Scrambling for his par. He's got a birdie chance, but it's not an easy one. Yeah. Alex Russell throwing a star max here. Really overstable driver. I think those are out of production, aren't they? I think so, yeah. That's pretty cool. You don't see many maxes around. I used to rip those things in the early thousands when they came out. Yeah. Yeah. They are stable, man. They are. Funny enough, I think Eagle actually bags one. Oh, no. That's a bit early. That's yeah. got to sit down. Oh. Uh, he pushes past the wall, and that's going to 
get the red flag. Misses all the things. I kind of like the wall, man. You can miss a little bit and still get a par. Mm -hmm. If you miss a lot, you get a man. It feels, or a bogey, sorry. It feels very fair. It is a fair hole. There's plenty of space at this distance to do exactly what Chris Dickerson is doing right now, which is piping the line, put the disc on the line of the basket, and try not to let it move. There's the, the JC line, right? Absolutely. Is that with that JC ABR? This that was is another PA3? cool way to attack this hole. If you've got the flick, mm -hmm. you know, it kind of makes the hole a bit wider when you play it that way. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, yeah. Smart. Alex, after missing the Mando, this will be throwing three trying. Oh. He might, ooh, he wow. got some friend cage on that. <laughs> He's he might that. be wondering why he went to the left side, and I think it's this hole you can choose whichever side of the drop zone you want to play from after oh. you've landed OB. <laughs> Obviously, we saw his just trail out to the right side, and uh -huh. everybody's probably wondering, why is he putting from over there? He has the option. Dealer's choice. Dealer's choice. Good birdie from Eagle right there. Yeah, he needed that. Yes, he did. After leaving a couple strokes on the table on that last hole. Mm -hmm. That is usually a birdie hole for him. Uh, Garrett will be looking to clean up his par right here. There we go. Gets it done. And Chris Dickerson. Doing what Chris Dickerson does most of the time. Lots of birdies, keeping things tight on the basket. Keeping the putting game pretty much a non-issue. Mm -hmm. You know, hole one, inside circle one. Hole two, inside circle one. Uh -huh. Hole three, inside circle <laughs> one. You know, like almost yeah. on the bullseye, two steps off the bullseye. And like these guys just aren't going to miss that putt very often. It's all about making it, make it easy for yourself on the green if you can. Absolutely. And he's got that dialed right now. Keeping that hand inside the frame of his body. On to hole eight. It's a good one. Absolutely. This hole hasn't been scoring super low. I mean, birdie is possible, but you got to throw a really good second shot to make the putt easy. You can get a long look at it, but I mean, what are the, you know, the chances you're making 50, 60 footers? Especially with mozzarella sticks. sticks yeah. Anyway. You know what I mean? It's just taking up airspace and making it a little bit more complicated. So the drive's got to be in position to make that second shot swing in there up the hill. Hopefully leave yourself with another inside circle putt for birdie. Chris, throwing a mid-range off the tee. Pure position play. Yeah, and he didn't even try to make it fade. He's just playing it straight towards the hill. A little bit short, maybe, but it's not a bad position. Good mm -hmm. angle. Cloud breaker from Eagle. You know, he may have intentionally been coming up short to play the roller in there. Right? Give himself some airspace to get that roller down. Exactly. Eagle's throwing the same shot he's throwing the previous two days. Setting up his forehand. Dropping the disc in the same spots. Getting the okay from the guys on 16 for Garrett. He's going to go with that rock three again. And again, probably similar to Chris, right? Setting up that roller. Looks like it. I mean, Double G doesn't need to throw a driver on this hole he throws so far. I'm yeah. sure if it gets a little away from him, it could find the OB on the left. Maybe it's just a position play. And Alex Russell ripping another 60 mile an hour flick up the right side, or the left side rather, finishing off to the right. Now it's his boss, as is tradition. Try to do two of those, and you got to look at Birdie. Yeah, you do. So here is Dickerson. Yep, looks to be going roller here, Philo. Go. So he doesn't have the longest flick, so this backhand roller will basically create the same shape just on the ground. He got it down in a hurry. Yeah, I think it might have been a little early. A little too early. Yep. Yeah. Catches that last mature one. He is right on circle two. Long outside look. Got a chance, but more than likely just a four. I guess that's the miss that doesn't put you in that left OB early. You know, making sure he really got it over. Alex piping that boss down the tunnel ah, again. he got up on that one. He needs to push that into the ground, like at those people in the background's head. Yeah, it'll skip, you know, on that, on those it barks will. and chip. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to get it there in the air, and it's, there's really not much airspace. Gary Gerthy, busting out a roller. Make this line a little bit better. Oh. Uh. Oh. 
catches the last big stump, but that would have been in the neighborhood of 20 feet. Yeah. If he misses that, even if it rolls up the hill and hits that wall, he's got a small downhill putt. Eagle going FD3. He's got to keep this low. Keep it low and tight. There we go. That looks really nice. There we go. Couldn't have drawn it up any better. On the good side of the sticks, and that is so important. Perfect. Here's where Alex Russell ended up. Well, you know, it's another opportunity for Eagle to gain strokes on Dickerson. You That's know, right. Like he's Dickerson's got a big putt, and you know, he's got a pretty manageable one. Very Great nicely up by Alex. done. This is a tricky looking bid. Uh, he's he's lining it up. He doesn't have any layup in him. If that were me, I'd probably just be chucking it up there past that high stake and just walking out of here. But some weird <laughs> things could happen if he gets a bad carom or something. Oh, yeah. It's, it's on an incline. Wow. And he doesn't touch anything but band. <clears throat> Lucky he, did, he doesn't get the bounce and roll. Oh, yeah. Garrett going to try and toss one in there. Okay. Yeah. Wrong side of the stake. And here is Eagle for a stroke on the card, and more importantly, one on Chris. Yeah, he needs this putt right now. There we go. Capitalizing on the moment there. Picking up a stroke on the leader. Well done, Trying Eagle. to keep this race as tight as possible. There's Dick. Person with the par. I mean, those two guys are pulling away right now. Yeah, look at that. You know, it was 10 strokes on third place for Chris Dickerson. At least on his card. On his card. I wish we start talking about Kyle Klein. I mean, he got on a heater early. I think he went, what, seven for seven? Something like that, yeah. I mean, yeah. Kid's on a heater right now, and Chris, I don't know if he's paying attention, if he's got, you know, his phone out ever checking the live scoring to see where things are shaking down behind him or out in front of him rather valiant effort there <laughs> maybe he does know because yeah. he ran that challenging putt mm -hmm. and that could have turned bad and ugly in a hurry and I think about this point like he's tied with Eagle or something very close to it uh, tell us about 9 Philo hole 9 well this hole has definitely changed from last year if you remember it was a triple island basket was over there towards the tennis courts and this year they brought the basket kind of more into its original area a bit further right and they've made this island green you gotta land safe to progress and this is one of those holes that could really bite you if you miss on your speed coming into the green come up a little short then you're progressing to where you were last in bounds and taking another stab at it eagle reach for the forehand here about as Sit. Okay. good as you could do it right Ooh. there without going out of bounds. Mm -hmm. Chris Dickerson. Throwing an M3, just a little placement shot. This is going to need to sit down in a hurry. Nestle, nestle. Oh. Well, he's right there on the line. I mean, he gets to progress to there, and he'll have a fair look on the green, but he'll be playing for par. Well, rock three from double G. This also needs to get yeah. stable. You wow. see that just little late push there? That's not what you need on this hole, and he'll also be playing from where he was last in bounds. Which is farther back than Chris though. Uh, I don't know. We'll see where they give him the spot. I mean, yeah. he kind of rode that OB line a while. I mean, he was he's still going to be up on the hill a little bit, uh -huh. but maybe closer to the down slope. At least it's Garrett Girthy, so we know he can we can get he can get to the pin if he wants to. Absolutely. That's a boss from Alex. Playing the high wide swooping hyzer into the center of the fairway there. Nicely done. Great shot. Yeah, look at where they gave him his mark, so he's he's up there a little bit. I'm looking at his third shot right now right around 300 feet into the green and excellent shot what a par G. save right there or i would assume so anyway here's chris dickerson 
kind of has to deal with his stake on his run-up. I, I wonder if it altered his angle in any way. I think he's got enough space to make it happen. Ooh, you see that back foot just missing it yeah. as he goes through his X step and puts a good one up there. It's just on the circle's edge. Not the best place to be putting <laughs> from, but he's safe. Alex looking to get on this island green. Ooh, uh, this rough is rough, and he's got a simmer down and nicely ooh, done. Great Alex, shot. That looks scary for a moment. It's still slightly uphill, and that was not very high off the ground. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look at an eagle with a P3X. I'm actually, I think it's an MD5, excuse me. That's got a mush. Eagle comes oh my up one disc short. short or oh. less, and he's going to have to progress. This is his live from his OB. Throwing four right now. Playing uh, a little safer here. A whole lot safer. This is going to be so out of position. Ugh, that's a putt. Yeah, he would have Don't stayed want. safe if he would have, you know, pressed the basket more with that swing. Mm -hmm. Here is the putt for five. That's got to sit down. All right, Ooh. he's good, but, man, he's coughing up strokes to Chris Dickerson if he, uh, Chris makes this putt, and he was in the driver's seat just a moment ago. Eagle was in position to gain more strokes on Chris Dickerson. And really big mistake on that speed coming into the green in the middle of the fairway. Yeah, Chris left the door open for a second, but Eagle did not walk through it. And oh. now Chris is making him pay. For now he's closing training. the door on him. <laughs> yeah, he's just not allowing Eagle to get too close, and just like that. Two more sticks. Alex to uh, get a birdie here. Yeah, that's, that's a great birdie. On stroke on the card? Absolutely. Plus. Closing the gap on Eagle a little bit more. Yeah, three strokes on the guy he was trying to chase down. Yeah, the he closest one anyway. Looked like almost out of touch from Eagle, and boom, just like that, 45 seconds later, he just almost cut it in half. Mm -hmm. There's Eagle's double. <clears throat> I had a perfect drive, too. Couldn't have asked for more out of Eagle off the tee. Yeah. He but. just totally misjudged his speed coming into the green. Here's Garrett for the par save. Great par save after that OB drive. For sure. You know, and that the thing about Eagle shot is you would anticipate seeing more guys miss long being aggressive than coming up short. Yeah. Like he had no reason to be conservative with that play. He could have aimed a little bit towards the circle's edge left and still had a chance to birdie and would have put the pressure on Chris again to gain stroke. So yeah, just a really unfortunate mistake there from Eagle McMahon. And here's your scores through the first nine holes. Chris Dickerson's right on pace, five under through nine. That's where most of us like to be on any scoring conditions out here. You got it. All right, guys, that's all we got for part one. We'll catch you in part two. Thanks for watching.